In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use simple tools in DaVinci Resolve to rotoscope a blemish on a face. So let's get straight to it. You'll notice I've already got a big project open. This is actually a short film project, a sci-fi movie. Um, and uh, a lot of work's already gone to it, but this is a piece of fix work that we need to do. You see this scar here uh, in the film. It's a little bit more pronounced perhaps than uh, we wanted in the first place. And in some occasions, in certain lights, uh, looks a little bit more fake than, than we wanted to. So uh, what we're gonna do is go in and use a bit of rotoscoping to blend this into the skin tone a little bit more to make it look a little bit less prominent. So it's actually pretty easy to do this in DaVinci Resolve. So you'll notice that I'm uh, here uh, in the color tab at the moment. And you'll also notice that in this particular clip, this is clip 113, uh, unlucky for some, I guess, uh, <laughs> that there's already, um, a node here which is adding a bit of a glow and you'll notice it's glow effect in the shot that's already part of the shot so we're going to ignore that just leave that to the side what we are going to do is click here on the uh, original node uh, and we're going to add a, uh, a serial node to this by clicking here and then you'll notice that the new node uh, appears uh, right there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into open effects and you'll see it's already open here and I'm going to grab Gaussian blur and I'm going to drop this over that node and what you'll notice instantly is that the whole image uh, becomes blurry which of course is not what we want to do but we do want to blur this section here so I'm just going to turn the blur off for a second so we go back to our original view and then I'm going to come down here uh, and I'm going to click on the window tool and I'm going to select this one here which is for, for drawing curves and then I'm going to zoom in just using the middle uh, middle mouse wheel um, on the mouse here um, find a point where I've got a nice clean view and then I'm going to start drawing a curve and what I'm going to do is because I'm going to try and kind of get the cheek area to look a bit blurry just rather than this part because if we just cut this bit out it will just look like an odd blur on her cheek I'm going to draw kind of this shape start drawing this here and and um you can uh you know get used to using this tool by just practicing really there's there's no ideal way of using it and actually because we're creating a blur rather than um an actual um you know specific uh rotoscope here we can kind of do do what we like so i've kind of done that and then i'm gonna move some of these bits around uh just to kind of create the shape that I'm looking for. So that's the shape there that we've got here. Just tidy that up a little bit there. Okay, good, so that's it. And then when we come back over here to Gaussian Blur and we turn this on, you will notice that it has magically made the scar better, but that's far too intense for what we're looking for. We still wanna see the scar. So I'm just gonna pull it down a little bit to there. And then just for the sake of interest, I'm turning that off and I'm gonna view this to see what it looks like with or without the blur. So that's with, so you can see it more clearly there. It just takes it away a little bit. And we're lucky in this shot because there's so many other blurry elements and parts that are out of focus, that does not look out of place. So I'm gonna turn the windows back on uh, to view them. And then what I'm gonna do is Obviously, this is a piece of video. We're not just photoshopping this, so I need this blur effect that I've created here to track with her face. Now, this is where we get to see how, how good DaVinci Resolve is at really doing this. Now, one of the mistakes that people often make when they're doing this is they'll then take this bar here and move it all the way back to the beginning to start of frame one. You don't need to do that. The beauty of DaVinci Resolve is that you can actually play forward or backwards on the tracker to track uh, this piece of film. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go forwards first. So I'm gonna track forward. And you'll notice that it's doing a very good job of holding her face throughout that shot and staying pretty much completely in the place that we want it to, even through that smile there. I think that that actually worked pretty well. So what you'll also notice is that there's now these two little markers here, these little um, little tracking points here. Um, and, and they tell you where it began tracking, where it ended. So now I can go back here uh, to, to this keyframe and I can click backwards. And so I'm gonna go 
and their immediately DaVinci Resolve did not enjoy that. So let me undo that again. Definitely did not like whatever it saw there. So I'm going to try again going track reverse. There we go, that's better. And you'll notice that with the tracker, it's not always perfect every time. Sometimes you need to try various little things to tweak it. But actually in this case, this has done an incredibly good job. So just to, to scan through that, you can turn this view off. So again, it tur turns off the window that is around this area. And you can just kind of roll through it and see how, how it's looking for you. And you may decide that you want a little bit more blur, for instance. Here you may decide, actually, we just want to blur it up a little bit more like that um, uh, as we watch it through. But as you'll see, that has actually done an incredibly good job of blurring the scar in a way that doesn't make it look too obvious. Now, one other thing to note is that you can actually, if you look really closely, see the edges, see where the blur begins and ends. So here's one other trick. So if we go back into the window tool here, and you'll notice that there's a softness element. We can create the blurry edge on this window by just kind of pulling this out. So that is gonna make the outside blur a little bit bigger, and inside we can also do that a little bit too. So then what we've done is created a slightly less obvious line. So if we now turn this off, you'll notice that there's a slightly less obvious edge to the blur than there was before. And it may be that we just want to do it a little bit, a little bit more. That's even better. Look, see, you can't quite see where it begins and ends quite so much. And I'm going to turn this down a little bit now as well just to try and make sure. So that's, again, if you remember what it looked like before, this is what it's gonna look like with a little bit of reducing it. And now we should see a really good track. It's holding its own and it actually looks pretty natural. So there we go.